When the God of War PC, uh, well, God of War Ragnarok PC system requirements dropped, I was actually kind of shocked at how reasonable they are. Now, that might kind of make sense because this is a cross-gen game. It does have a PlayStation 4 version. Uh, but uh, compared to a lot of games which are demanding upscaling, this is native resolution, no upscaling employed, at least for the system requirements chart. Although, ah, account required for PlayStation uh, Network. Now, I will say that when I logged into the game, it didn't actually make me log into my PlayStation account, but if they're not selling it in regions that don't support PlayStation Network, then I guess... Um, that could be a, an, an issue. So uh, if we move past that, which seems to be the most uh, common reason for some review bombs on Steam at the moment, uh, how is the game actually performing for those of us in a region where we are allowed to play it, at least uh, uh, you know, acquiring it through legitimate means? Uh, again, system requirement chart looks pretty reasonable. It's not super heavy on the CPU, and uh, that does stand up in my, in my play testing. I do have the game, it's running right now. We can kind of play around a little bit. Um, so, so overall thoughts. Yeah, it has not been super heavy on the CPU, which makes sense since it's a cross-gen game that runs on a PlayStation 4, which has a pretty weak CPU. Now, I haven't tested it on super low-end CPUs, but my 7800X 3D has been able to go achieve some pretty high frame rates uh, without hitting a CPU limitation. So I think weaker CPUs should be able to achieve reasonable frame rates. Uh, again, looking at the system requirements charts, the GPU demand doesn't seem too crazy. Like for 1440p high setting 60 FPS, uh, an RTX 3070, and that's without using DLSS, right? So this game does a lot right. So let's pop back into the actual game and talk about this a little bit. So um, I've played beyond this point, but I was mostly playing on my 4090 because that's just you know what I was playing on when I was playing it. And I will say that everything seems super smooth, but for this kind of a video, it makes more sense to be uh, on a more reasonable GPU. So this is currently running on an RTX 3060. This is the 12 gigabyte original version of the 3060. Although you can see that the VRAM being used right now is nowhere near 12 gigabytes. If you look right here, uh, this is the uh, per process usage. This is the allocation. So we have 12 available, but we're currently under eight, at least in this scene. Now, at what graphics settings? So right now, believe it or not, we're actually at 1440p resolution, and it is a full native 1440p resolution at ultra settings. Now, there are more demanding areas of the game, but notice in this one, we're hanging out around 50 frames per second. Um, and so, you know, th there's, you know, it's not the most amazing, but again, we're at maximum, you know, ultra settings at native 1440p resolution on an RTX 3060. So not bad at all. And the game does have upscaling support and we could turn down graphic settings. We're gonna do both. But guys, watch what happens when you turn down the graphic settings. You see them change in real time underneath the menu. And I absolutely love that. Because then when you change individual graphic settings, you can see what they do in real time. And uh, if you're running a, um, a frame rate counter like I am, you can see the frame rate change. Notice that our frame rate is now hovering around 58, 59. Let me go back to ultra and as, as, as it loads in, watch the frame rate counter. Uh, we're at around uh, 51 or so. So you can see that in this scene, the difference in performance between a full ultra preset and the high preset takes you from 51 at ultra up to, again, let it kind of settle in, but I love it, you see it change in real time, uh, around 59 frames per second at the high settings. And so I can back out of the menu uh, and we can see that, yeah, it is running at 59 frames per second, just like it was in the menu. Now, again, as frame rates variable as we uh, look around and everything, but also look at the frame time graph as I run around. It's very, very smooth. I, uh, in my limited playtime with the game so far, I have not been running into shader compilation stutter. It has a shader compilation step at the beginning of the game, uh, and I haven't seen any major traversal stutter, things like that. Now again, I beat the game on PS5, but I've only played it for a couple hours on PC. This is an early part of the game when you get control of your character. Uh, so I'm not showing you uh, too far into the game, but I've honestly only, I haven't played super far past this point, to be honest. So uh, again, maybe later in the game, there's more issues than I'm seeing here, but overall, things are looking pretty good. Uh, if you go all the way down to medium settings, again, you're taking a bigger hit to the image quality, but again, let this fade in. But guys, frame rate counter's up around 70 right now. And if I back out of this, this is native 1440p resolution. And again, frame rate varies a bit, but we're bouncing in the upper 60s to mid, mid to upper 70s 
depending on what's going on on screen. Are there probably more demanding areas in the game where it'll dip below 60? Sure, but it's looking like 1440p medium uh, is pretty dang performant. And remember, RTX 3060 um, uh, on the GPU here. Now, if we did want to use upscaling, which if I'm on a 3060 playing on a 1440p monitor, oftentimes DLSS quality is going to be pretty reasonable to, to, to go with. And notice the game has FSR 3.1 as an option, but we also do have XCSS and DLSS. Now I want to notice, note something, because we have FSR 3.1, frame generation is available uh, for a 30 class GPU even if I'm not using DL, uh, even if I'm not using FSR upscaling. Notice I can scroll over to DLSS and FSR frame generation stays enabled. But for now, I'm gonna turn off the FSR frame generation. Uh, so we can see it that non-frame generated numbers. Now DLAA is available, that's full native resolution using DLA for upscaling. But let's go down to DLSS quality, which will lower the internal rendering resolution of the game. And the game even displays the internal rendering resolution it's using. In this case, it drops down to 1696 by 952. I think DLSS quality sets a two thirds per axis render scale. Um, Anyway, uh, I can hear my cat throwing up in the background right now. That's really gross, guys. Anyway, let's move on. So at medium settings with DLSS quality, you can see that our performance around here in the easier direction here is almost 100 frames per second. This way seems to be a bit harder to render. We drop down to, you know, 80s and, and such. There's probably more demanding areas of the game, but you could take a pretty big hit and still be around 60 FPS at these settings. And you know, if you're willing to go a bit bit below that, I mean, um, hey guys, could we go back up to high settings or even ultra settings? Check this out. Ultra settings, which we can see, see loading in here. So they're loaded in. Ultra settings, DLSS quality, 1440p screen on the, on the 3060 and performance is quite good. Um, again, around 70, 80 FPS here, bounces up to 100 on easier scenes, can drop down into, uh, the 60s or so looking this direction. So again, are there, yeah, depending on what you're looking at and what's happening in the game, it can dip. But this is ultra settings DLSS quality. That, that's, that's a pretty decent baseline. So like I said, turn down to medium settings and, and you're in pretty great shape. Uh, also, we do have um, uh, frame generation available. Again, if you're on an NV uh, uh, NVIDIA 40 series GPU or above, if you're watching this in the future and there's future generations, uh, you'd have uh, NVIDIA's frame generator but we have FSR frame generation, but, and because it's the 3.1 version, it's compatible with DLSS upscaling as the baseline if you're on an NVIDIA 20 or 30 series GPU. And if you're on AMD GPU and you'd rather use something like XCSS, that's also gonna be compatible with AMD's uh, uh, frame generation, which is really nice. I'm gonna go with the DLSS quality uh, with the FSR frame generation at the ultra settings as a baseline. And since our baseline frame rate was over 60, at least in this scene, that means our overall frame rate right now is now over 100. Now do keep in mind frame generation for those of you who are maybe not super familiar with it. It's not gonna make the game more responsive. When I hit buttons, it's not gonna respond quicker. It's actually gonna respond slightly slower than before I turn frame generation on, even though my overall frame rate number is higher. Now, the overall frame rate of the game is increasing in the sense that your monitor will have more frames on it because more frames will be displayed, but they're not actually rendered by the game engine. Uh, the game engine is gonna render two frames uh, and you know, you'll see both of those, but it's actually gonna slightly delay showing you the second one in order to interpolate what's happening between them. And it will display an image that isn't actually being rendered by the game that's based on a best guess of what happened between the two actual frames the game rendered. That means that that in-between frame could have image quality issues, especially the lower your base frame rate is because there'll be a larger difference between the two frames that were rendered uh, for the game to interpolate. Also, the faster the motion is on the screen, the harder it is to render those in-between frames. Also, it's slightly delaying showing you that later frame, uh, which, decreases game responsiveness, and also there's a, a performance cost to calculating that, that interpolated frame, which means that the actual rendered uh, frame rate number is gonna be lower than before you turn frame generation on. So do always keep that in mind, that your frame rate number goes way up, but there are some image quality costs and some responsiveness costs in order to get that increased fluidity. Also keep in mind, you're watching a 60 FPS YouTube video, so while this looks choppy, I can see in my recording, 
Um, on my actual screen, it looks a lot smoother with the higher frame rate. Um, uh, but the capture is out of sync with the uh, with with the uh, with, with the frame rate the game is rendering at. YouTube captures at a locked 60 FPS, uh, whereas the game is running at a variable refresh rate that doesn't match 60 FPS. Anyway, so I do want to uh, highlight that the game does have FSR 3.1 frame generation available, which is really nice. But frame rates are good enough that I honestly might just try to you know lock to 60 FPS or something like that, or maybe go a bit above. Uh, uh, without it, uh, if, if you're able to on your hardware. So overall, like I said, performance looking pretty good. We could go down to, notice that the, the jump on high settings isn't massive. Medium compared to ultra though, gets you quite a big frame rate boost. Uh, uh, medium's at 95 FPS here. High, once we let it load in, um, let's see, looks like we were at 84 FPS and then ultra settings in this scene, uh, looks like we're down around 78. So again, from ultra at 78 to high at, you know, only about 84, that's not a massive performance bump, at least in, in this scene. And then medium settings uh, jumping up to 95 or so. So that, that's a much more noticeable jump. Now, if I go all the way down to low settings, I mean, things are certainly going to look a lot lower settings. But now we're up to 140 FPS with DLSS quality low settings on, on a 1440p monitor. Again, internal rendering resolution lower. Um, but guys, there's a lot of performance here to be had. And then if you're at a frame rate this high, and maybe you're on a, like a 240 hertz monitor or something like that, uh, and you want to just, you know, fill up your, your, your available monitor hertz with frame generation, uh, let's kick that on and see what happens. So it looks like with that on, Eh, bumping up to 166. So it didn't go uh, a massive frame rate bump there um, off of the base frame rate. Because uh, I think we're getting to a point where we're computing those in between frames. Again, they have a performance cost and we're running a lot of frames already. Uh, so um, not, not a massive bump from that. So I might leave it off at that point. But hey, uh, there's a lot of performance to be had here. So I guess what I'm saying is it does look like the uh, fairly reasonable uh, system requirements charts, which say that reasonable GPUs can run at reasonable settings and frame rates without even requiring uh, upscaling, which means that upscaling actually does what I think most people want it to do, which is boost your performance beyond what was already reasonable. Uh, it does seem to be delivering on that. Now, I will say that it does have an absolute massive install size. Like this game took forever to download, even on a, on a pretty uh, fast internet connection. And if you have data caps and things like that, you know, eh, that's a bit of a negative. Uh, but overall, I've got to say that in the few hours I've been able to play around with it, I've been impressed by the performance of the game. Keeping in mind, it's a cross-gen game. So the graphs technically, uh, the graphics aren't like mind blowing, but guys, look at this at low settings right now, right? Like this is at low settings. And if you look at things in detail, sure, like the textures aren't amazing and like the effects themselves aren't amazing. But, uh, and, and if you look at the, you know, reflections, they don't look amazing. You look at these volumetrics and the lighting in it, maybe not amazing. What I'm trying to get at is when you look at each thing individually, yeah, I can tell maybe that they're low settings, but when you look at the art design, the art still looks good, right? So this is where I think a game is able to do a lot with art design rather than relying on just pushing maximum technical boundaries. Uh, even if we go up to ultra settings, um, again, things look a lot better than they did on, on low settings, uh, but the technical detail on every little thing, if you zoom in super close on every little texture, and if you look at you know, how much polygon detail is on this rock behind me right now, you know, we're not talking Unreal Engine 5 nanite levels of detail, and maybe some of these shadows and these volumetrics look a little bit weird if you look at them close. But again, the overall art design I think looks great. And so that's kind of my final thoughts on this game is I think this is a game where it can perform well while looking really good on reasonable hardware because I think a lot of attention was paid to making the art look great without having to ramp up a massive performance cost for the art, if that makes sense. 
um, r rather than just pushing massive technical boundaries. So could the game look better if they did push massive technical boundaries? Yeah, probably could, but the overall art design looks great without having to do that, and it seems pretty reasonable on the performance cost standpoint, at least on the part of the game I've been able to get through so far. Let me know you got, uh, how it's running on your systems, and hope all of you have an excellent day.